Welcome back to Universe. I'm Andrew, and it's time for the second semifinals of my Flesh and Blood tournament. We've got Katsu versus Chain, and the winner will go on to fight Briar for the win. So let's see. Starting out with Katsu's first turn. He's going to start out by pitching a blue card for three resources and paying one to play a yellow leg tap. Just go again, and it's going to be attacking for three. I'll have two left and uh, have that come in chain. And because he's getting a free redraw, I think he'll go ahead and block for three. But with the go again, Katsu can follow up with a red leg tap attacking for four. And Chain's gonna block all of that with a total of five. And I guess Chain will spend his last, or Katsu will spend his last resource to attack with this scar for a scar for four damage and no go again. And I guess we will just say Chain will go ahead and block two of that, taking two and going down to 18 which means Katsu can clean up here and uh, redraw. Chain also gets to redraw. So Chain will start out by making a Soul Shackle. So this is a token that he can make with his ability. So at the beginning of your turn, Banish up the top card of your deck, but a bunch of his cards can be played from Banish. Uh, he's using that with his ability here that says he makes a Soul Shackle and gives his next card go again basically. So he's going to pitch this for three resources to pay a uh, four Lunar Tide Plunderer, which is going to be attacking for six. And if it hits, it will banish a card from the hero's soul, but that won't apply to Katsu. I think Katsu will block three of that with this Woman Gust Wave and go to 17. And this does have go again because of Chain's ability. So he will then pitch a Riftbind Red for one and pay for an attack from the weapon Galaxy Black. It's going to be attacking for one. The condition doesn't apply to give plus two more attack, but if it does hit, it will deal also one arcane damage. And I think Katsu can block with the breaking scales at this point, turn two damage into one. So he's just going to block with that one defense in the corner, and uh, the Battle Worn ability will mean it won't be able to defend again this game, but he should still be able to use the attack reaction later. So I'll mark that, and then Death just blocked for one, which means Chain's turn will end, and the remaining card in his hand will go into his arsenal. Draw four new cards. Okay, now Katsu's got three cards to work with, and I think he's going to start by pitching three, uh, pitching for three in order to play open the center for two, and that says, uh, if head jab was the last to attack this combat chain, open the center gains a plus one attack. Go again and dominate. Fortunately, that does not apply. And actually rewind that because I think what we could do instead is uh, spend one, have two, and instead of playing open the center, we can attack with the harmonized Kadachi for one. I think that's going to be a little bit better. And Chain has decided not to block a single damage, so he'll go down to 17. And now Katsu can pay the other two for the open the center. So the ability still doesn't apply, uh, but we're attacking for five at this point. And just for clarity, the Harmonized Kadachi uh, says that while there's a card with cost zero in your pitch zone, it has go again. So Whelming Gust Wave does cost zero and, be, and exist in the pitch zone, so that's why we're able to attack with open the center after the Kadachi. I think Chain will block for six against that and take no damage. And I did make a mistake. I meant to have Katsu also use the Snapdragon Scalers because it's an attack reaction. He should have done it as soon as he played the open the center. But I was, as I blocked with Chain, I knew that I meant for this to have go again. So we are using these Snapdragon Scalers. Uh, so the open the center has go again. And Katsu will also attack with Fluster Fist for two. And if it was the last attack, if open the center was the previous attack, this will gain plus one for each attack that is hit, which unfortunately for Katsu is only one, but it'll just be an attack for three. And this one chain has decided to take going down to 14. So that will end Katsu's turn. So the chain will start his turn by triggering the soul shackle, banishing the top card of his deck, which is a red piercing shadow vise. So I think chain will go ahead and use his ability to make another rune chant or soul shackle uh, token. And also reveal his mentor, who's in his space here, Lord Sutcliffe, who's basically going to deal arcane damage to each hero whenever Chain plays a non-attack action card, and when three damage has been dealt, Chain will get to search for a specialization card. But I don't think the non-attacks are coming this turn, so he's going to pitch a blue Piercing Shadow Vice to pay for Vexing Malice, which has go again because Chain made a Soul Shackle. That's going to be an attack for three, and it's also going to deal two arcane damage. Problem is, 
cuts, you can see this five damage plus that follow up piercing shadow eyes is going to be coming in for six. So he might think about taking five, but not 11. So I think he's going to have to block for three. So he'll just take the two arcane damage going to 15. And then of course, Chain will spend his remaining two resources to play the piercing shadow vise. So it can be played from the Banish Zone, which is how he's able to play it now. And if you've dealt arcane damage, it's plus two for a total of six. And I think Katsu will block for six. He's not thrilled about it, but maybe he can t find a more exciting hand worth fighting over later on. Which means Katsu can either, this is a one cost card, so he can't pay for it. He could use Hardened Cross Draft to play it, but that's not worth it. He could pitch it to attack for one, uh, but this doesn't cost zero, so it wouldn't have go again. He wouldn't be able to use the second resource for the second attack. I think instead what he's just going to do is put that in his arsenal and hopefully make better use of it later. Which means Chain will now banish two cards with his two soul shackles, neither of which can be played from banish or have blood debt. So that is interesting. Didn't really get much that turn, which means he'll be playing with his hand. So Chain's going to start out by pitching two and playing Spew Shadow, which says to choose an action, an attack in your banish zone would cost one or less, and you can play it this turn. If it attacks a light hero, it's plus two, but that's not the case. That is a non-attack action card, so Lord Sutcliffe will trigger, dealing one arcane damage to each hero, putting Chain down to 13, and Katsu down to 14. And then that did cost a two, so we're gonna pitch another Warmonger's Recital for two more, and pay one of that to play the Arcane Crackle, which costs one is an attack, or rather costs one or less, and it's an attack. Uh, it's gonna attack for one and deal one arcane damage. I think Katsu will let that two damage through, going down to 12. We can't block the arcane damage anyway. And this attack had go again because of the soul shackle, which I meant to make. Lord Sutcliffe should also have two counters on him because he's dealt two arcane damage so far. And then Chain will spend his remaining resource to play Ghostly Visit, which is an attack for four. Can be played from Banish, that doesn't apply. Blood Debt doesn't apply, so it's just the attack for four. And he's also going to use the Snapdragon Scalers to give this a go again. And I think Katsu will take that four damage as well, going down to eight. Uh, however, with the go again from the Scalers, Chain is going to use Aether Iron Weave just to destroy it for two resources, but it can only be used if you've played an attack and a non-attack this turn, which he has. And he can use one of those two resources to attack with Galaxy Black. The other one will be wasted, but because he's played a card from Banish this turn, it's gonna be attacking with plus two for a total of three. And if it hits, it'll deal an extra arcane as well. Unfortunately, the cards that block for three in Katsu's hand, he really wants to keep. This one because it pitches or cost zero and pitches for three. And this one, because he's gonna try to do the combo this turn with Pounding Gale, might not work anyway. Going down to four seems dangerous. He can block for two and take two. But I think he's gonna risk it. Let's see what happens if he toes down to four here. He's got 13 damage to deal though. I'll clean up chain. And Katsu's going to play Head Jab, which costs zero, has go again. And we're gonna use the breaking scales to add plus one to its attack, making it a four. Four is definitely harder to block, but I think Chain will block for four here. He's got all reds, so he's not gonna have a lot to do anyway. So Katsu's, that didn't hit, so he's gotta change gears a little bit. He's gonna pitch this surging strike for two, an attack with leg tap from his arsenal which costs one, and it's got go again, it's attacking for three. Which puts Chain in a tough spot because if he banishes some cards with Blood Debt, he's gonna wanna be able to play them. And with just a couple of reds in his hand, it's gonna be challenging. But let's prevent three now anyway. Which puts Katsu in an awkward spot. He's not gonna be able to combo anything. Well, actually he does have this rising knee thrust. Uh, if Leg Tap was the last attack, this combat chain it gets plus two and go again. So. Leg tap was the last attack, even though it didn't hit, we're still gonna get that. So we're attacking for three. And now Chain actually cannot block three. He's only got a two block, so he's just gonna take the three. So Katsu still just has the one resource left, and he does have go again, which means he can afford to play this pounding gale. If open the center was the last attack, it wasn't blah, 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 so we're attacking for five. 
which is pretty nice, even though we didn't get too much actual comboing. And again, I think Chain will just take all of this and go down to five. So Katsu is done, used his arsenal to good effect, and Chain has to see what his three soul shackles have to say. That is two pieces of blood debt. Unfortunately, the best he can do is play this Seeds of Agony, cost zero, can be played from Vanish, and your next attack action card with cost one or less deals one arcane damage to the hero, and go again. But Chain cannot play any cards that meet that criteria. This Shadow Vice costs two, and he only has a red card, which therefore would pitch for one. So he will pitch it for one and attack with Galaxy Black. He has played a card from his Vanish Zone, so it will be attacking for three, and if it hits, it deals a fourth arcane damage. Also, when I played the Seeds of Agony, it is a non-attack action, so that should trigger... Maybe let's rewind a little bit here. Um, this is giving us one. Lord Sutcliffe will trigger, dealing one arcane damage each. We'll block chains with the Spell Fray Gloves, so Katsu goes to three. And Lord Sutcliffe goes to three, which means Chain gets to search for a specialization card, which is Soul Reaping. So that doesn't change too much. This Soul Reaping is going to end up in the arsenal here, and we are going to be attacking with Galaxy Black. I think Katsu will block with Flick Flack as a defense reaction, so during the reaction step, uh, but that'll be four to block the three, so no arcane damage comes through. And that will end Chain's turn. And Katsu can play, pitch a blue plunder run for three, uh, cost zero, so these harmonized Kadachis will have go again, and uh, start a series of attacks with those. And speaking of pings of damage, I forgot Chain did have one blood debt card here that he should have taken damage from, and so he should be at four with this Kadachi attack incoming. Now he's actually got a bunch of blue cards, which would be nice for playing banished blood debt cards. So I think he's gonna block with, or do you just take the one? Maybe he just needs to take one. Let's block one and see what Katsu has next, which actually is the second Kadachi, which also has go again. This time Chain will take it and Katsu will spend his third resource on Blackout Kick, which is another combo that won't be having its effect other than just attacking for four. So now Chain will definitely want to block that. Probably just block three of it and take another one going down to two. And Chain has a card for his, or Katsu has a card for his arsenal, which he'll leave over there. Chain will Soul Shackle three cards. One of them is Blood Debt and can be played from Banish. So Rift Bind. So he's got a lot of attacks. And I don't think he can afford to play this Soul Reaping. Well, he can afford it. He could pitch six and play it. Or he could just pitch or banish one card using the effect and attack for six. It wouldn't generate any resources, however. Then he would still hold on to this to make three. He'd give this go again with Chain. And he'd be able to play the Piercing Shadow Vise or Rift Bind from Banish as a follow-up attack. But that would still leave one Blood Debt, which doesn't kill him. Or he could leave the Soul Shackle where it is, pitch both of these, use Chain to gain go again with a Soul Shackle and play both attacks from his Banish pile, getting rid of all the Blood Debt. He would be throwing some damage toward Katsu, but he'd mostly be focusing on his own survival and not taking damage. So that might be better. Um, so we're gonna pitch for six. Could do less, but I don't think we need to necessarily need to hold one of these cards, do we? Maybe the Arcanic Crackle's okay. So if we just make three instead, hold this, take a Soul Shackle for go again, play Rift Bind for one. It gets plus zero, because zero is the number of non-attacks we've played this turn, so it's an attack for one, which Katsu has to deal with, though he is at three. So he's gonna block for two, and then Chain can spend two to play Piercing Shadow Vise for four. So Katsu has to block that, at least some of it. So he's gonna block three of it and take one, going down to two. And that will end Chain's turn with no blood debt in his discard. He's gonna hold this because it's blue and can deal arcane damage. So what can Katsu do with the two cards plus his arsenal? So he's gonna play Thunder Run. Next time an attack action card you control hits this turn, draw a card. And if it was played from Arsenal, which it was, it'll add a damage as well. 
and go again. Then we'll play, well, we'll pitch this blue wounding blow and spend two of three resources for a go again. Surging strike attacking for five plus one is six with one remaining. And you know what? We're coming down to it. We may as well use this heartened cross strap instead. So it says the next action card you play this turn costs two less and go again. So let's make that surging strike cost zero, keeping all three of our resources. In fact, we don't necessarily even have to show that we have that, but that'll let us line up a couple of harmonized Kadachi's attacks. And in the odd chance that Katsu or Chain lets us draw a card off of that, we will also get to draw a card, which we could potentially use. So Chain does need to block that. He can't let Katsu get a card. Fortunately, he has two threes, so he can block all six cleanly there. So now Katsu will go ahead and pitch the Wounding Blow for three resources and make a pair of Harmonized Kadachi attacks, which Chain could take one of. In fact, I think he will, again, saving that Arcanic Crackle for the three resources. So he'll block one, take the other. Otherwise, he would gain some blood debt and then he would have no ability to play anything uh, and potentially take damage from his own banished zone from the soul shackles. So chain will go to one and it will pretty much come down to is chain able to play stuff from his banished and or his arsenal and how much of it will Katsu be able to block with these four cards. All right, so four soul shackles means four banished cards. Got two with blood debt. Rift Bind and Bounding Demigon for total cost of one. So one option Chain has would just be to play both of those attacks using this to pay for them and Chain's ability to give them go again. Actually, the Demigon can only be played from Banish if you've played a non-attack, which Chain doesn't have, which means he's not gonna be able to play it. Let me make sure. Yeah, Chain is in a tough spot. He cannot play that Demigon. He doesn't have a non-attack. He could play this by banishing a card from his hand, which would be this Crackle, but doesn't have Blood Debt, so it wouldn't give him a resource. It might have made more sense to save this card instead, just because it has Blood Debt. It would give one resource to chain after playing Soul Reaping. You could have Go Again and then attack with the Rift Bind, attacking for six and then three. But he done, obviously didn't know that was what was coming, but just wondering for my own strategy, playing chain, what is the best way to hedge your bets for that. But given what we decided, we could banish this to play Soul Reaping. We could have it have go again, but then we wouldn't have any resources left to play Rift Bind. So basically we can play one attack, but not two. Although if we pitch the Crackle for three, we can play Rift Bind with Go Again and then attack with Galaxy Black for one. But at least we're making two attacks one for three and then one for one that's easily blockable if we attack with this we have no follow-up so which is harder to block six or three and then one i haven't looked at katsu's hand but i would assume he'd be able to block any of that easily let me see if he's at least got two three blocks in his hand he actually doesn't so i was thinking about just counting chain down for the count completely he has to win this turn so all Katsu has to do is block. So he can block, regardless of how, even if he loses his whole hand to block, he can block. And then Chain will lose to this blood debt that he can't get rid of this turn. Which means I'm gonna call it for Katsu and I'm gonna rewind and say that we blocked with Chain, or Chain blocked with the Crackle instead of the Rip Through Reality, just to see if Chain has a chance in this alternate reality. But again, Katsu has won. So let's rewind that. Let's play Soul Reaping, Banishing Rip Through Reality. Although no, that because that gives us another Blood Debt card. So never mind. That's just another yet another Blood Debt we wouldn't be able to play. So we would gain a resource. We could have taken a Soul Shackle to give Rift Bind to play Rift Bind as a follow up, and then we'd be attacking for nine. Oh no, that's better. Okay, so yeah, we would still now we take two damage at the end of our turn, but at least uh, that's going to be a lot harder for Katsu to deal with. So we've made one, we've gained a Soul Shackle for Go Again, and we're currently attacking with Soul Reaping with this Rift Bind in our Banish Pile. Can Katsu block six? And all of that is public information. Chain has no cards in his hand. We can see his face up Banish Pile, so we know exactly what's coming. We know we need to block three more after the initial six, which is a total of nine. We can block six, but we cannot block nine because Katsu has four 
twos in hand. He has Flick Flack, which says the next card uh, you defend with this turn is if it has combo gains plus two. So if we block with some, let's say we block with four plus this Flick Flack as a defense reaction and then follow up with combo card, we can block Rift Bind except for that none of these actually has combo either. So instead, we can use this Hope Merchant's Hood, I believe. It's an instant, says destroy it, and shuffle a number of cards from our hand into our deck and then draw that many cards. As an instant, I believe we can do that on our opponent's turn. So let's just, let's maybe keep the Flick Flack, but hope for some threes. These three cards will go back into our deck, and Katsu will draw three new cards, also are all twos, and don't have combo again. So it looks like if I had played it correctly for chain, or differently, I don't, still don't know what is necessarily correct, probably would have won because I can block four, four, and then use this defense reaction for two more for a total of six to block the soul reaping. And then Chain can play Rift Bind to attack for three, and all we have left is two more. Although, no, we're still at two. We would go down to one from that. <laughs> and after all that, that one extra damage means we still do survive as Katsu. And Chain dies to his own blood debt. So there you go. It is dangerous to play in the shadows. Katsu will be going on to fight Briar in the final, so stay tuned. For that, thanks for watching. Subscribe so we can get more subscribers, and bye.